James Hutchinson and uh, JT. Hello. Um, hello, everybody. As we look back on Saturday's defeat, the league leaders, Norwich City, uh, which capped off a disastrous match where Borough only picked up one point from five games, mate. Yes. So it's yes. been a dreadful month for the Borough. Um, and that defeat on Saturday, that means for the first time this season since the opening day, we've dropped out the top six. Um, we've got two massive games though this week coming up. We've got Bristol City at home tomorrow night mm. um, and then Swansea away at the weekend. Borough fans, do you think Borough can uh, rescue a playoff place from what really has been a frustrating yeah. and disappointing season, hasn't it? Disappointing really, mate? season. Yeah, disastrous. Not that we're wrong. We've had some good times. We've had some bad times, but... I just I just don't see it um, getting any better. Yeah. From honest, I feel like what's happening is happening. And purely, I mean, listen, does he want it that badly? Does he know he's going to go at the end of the season? Is he thinking eight games to go? Is he bothered to fans aren't on his side? All that sort of stuff comes into play. But I just look at it, man. I just think, you know, if the season finished tomorrow, I'd be over the moon. <laughs> I really would be yeah. over the moon. I really would be because... You know, it's been so disappointing. Yeah. It really has been so disappointing. We knew that this year was a massive year mm-hmm. in terms of parachute payments, etc. And we, you know, like next season we're going to be even more skin for skin now. Mm-hmm. So disappointing. See how it goes. Well, let us know, Borough fans. Thanks for all those people that are tuning in, watching tonight. Let us know where you think uh, Borough's season's heading and what the final outcome's going to be. I think it's going to be a rather lively show tonight, mate. All right. Uh, so looking back at Saturday, we made our way to the Captain James Cook Stadium, whatever that was. <laughs> I don't have a clue what was that all about, that? Uh, it was like a Celebrate Tees Valley Day, so it was uh, all about raising Fair funds enough. for various things around Teesside, something they renamed the stadium for one day. Didn't make no real odds to the final outcome on the pitch, did it? No, uh, not at all. <laughs> I mean, um, in fairness, in the first half, I thought we played reasonably well. We created one or two chances um, without really threatening Tim Krull in the Norwich goal. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I mean... <laughs> It just seemed like all our shots were through down his throat, mate. And I feel like if we were put him in a corner, nine down out of ten, hard and low, you scored a goal. Mm-hmm. But every single shot we had, he went wide out, straight down his throat, mate. And yeah. I'd say, you know, they had one real chance set and half and took it. Yeah. Lee Bailey, I'm going to disagree with you. Thanks for coming on the show last week. He thought it was a routine win for Norwich. How can we go that far? I mean, I don't think they were ever comfortable. I mean, no. the second half, for all we didn't play very well... We made better chances in the second half. Um, we had a couple cleared off the line and, yeah. and chances that should have been put away that didn't. But in fairness, for a 20-minute spell after the squad, Norwich were comfortably on top then, weren't they? That's why they're top of the league, mate, mm. in my opinion. That's why they're top of the league, Norwich, because it wasn't the game that they go into and smash it a bit to win 4-0. Mm. They knew for a fact that they were going to come here, we were going to dig in, we were going to make it difficult. They knew that. And the second they got the goal, they sat back, defended, part of the bus... No, no, you're not coming in. You're not coming anywhere near our box. Yeah, yeah. I and mean, when we did get in the box and made it hard work, they made it look that easy, and that's why they're going to go up as champions, in my opinion, because they just know how to three games out. They know how to win a game, and the games are tough, you know. And that's the thing. That's a little bit that we miss. Mm. We sort of lacked a little bit of that cutting edge. There's a cutting edge, and I think Steve Trodden's picked up on a great point here, which I think one or two other Borough fans have uh, noticed over the weekend. Why can the Borough only seem to last sixty minutes? Yeah. And, and it seems as though there's no pace, which there isn't any pace really in that side. There's more <laughs> pace on the bench than yeah. on the pitch on Saturday. And we can't, last 90 minutes, we can't live with teams that have a little bit of an injection of pace through the team, like Derby did when they came here, yeah. Forest, um, Villa, twice, Norwich on Saturday. Um, and then it's interesting how people see the games differently. Joe Macker, Borough fans mourn that there is nothing to mourn about. Do you, you think you're saying we're mourning and there's no reason to mourn or... I'm not nah, quite sure what you mean there, Joe. There's plenty of reason to mourn, Joe. There's plenty of reason to mourn. Um, this season, <laughs> there's a reason to mourn. The transfers, another reason. I think, don't get me wrong, Borough fans, from, some Borough fans from the minute we kick off in August, right through to the final day, you'll always have to mourn us. Always have them. Season for Borough fans, by, Borough, well, not just Borough fans, like football fans by nature are never yeah. happy with things. No, You're always going to find something to pick it and have a go about, aren't you? Um, not. I mean, going back to Saturday's game as well, it was a talking point after the game which Tony Pulis brought up about um, the challenge by Marco Steeperman in the first half on George Friend. Yeah. Now, Friend needed stitches in his ankle Did at half-time, yeah. Um, Didn't know Do you that. think that could have been a red card? Hey, if he got stitches in his ankle. Yeah. <laughs> when I seen it at first, I thought it was a red. Right. How he's pulling out a yellow card, 
I've, I've no idea, but the fact that the guy had to get stitches, I didn't even know he had to get stitches in his ankle. I didn't even know yeah, that. Yeah, no, he had stitches in his ankle at half time. So fair play when he came back out second half and um, yeah, give, yeah, well, give it his all as he always does, George. But yeah, like we said, second half, we created some good chances without really playing well, I thought. Um, and we keep repeating ourselves week after week. And I had a good text from Dave Richardson, good follower of the programme, Big Butter fan goes home and away. And he said, Tony Pulis bangs on week after week about we don't take our chances, which I think yeah. we agree on. And yeah. Borough fans as well agree. Yeah. When he took the job last year, when Gary Monk, uh, he replaced Gary Monk, he said, I'm not going to spend any of Steve Gibson's money. He's already spent an awful lot of money. Yeah. I'm not going to waste his money. Then this year, the club spent very little money. Yeah. And I think we've known all along that for whatever reason, Asombolonga, Gested, Fletcher, Hugel, haven't done it for us as strikers, haven't scored the mm. goals. So why haven't we tried to replace them? Well, first was the wages. Teams, especially championship teams, wanted to get other players. And listen, I know we're going to pay 50 grand a week for Rudy Gestead. No disrespect to him, but the wages are, are just ridiculous. Trying to offload Martin Braithwaite. He's obviously got to go. He's going to have to go to someone foreign. The lads, the lads who've got a strike is, the thing is, well, the thing that annoys me is that these lads are talented. You know what I mean, they've got the ability. If they didn't have the ability, then they wouldn't be professional, professional footballers, but they just don't look interested. I mean, don't worry about Fletcher, right? Fletcher, I like him a lot. And, you know, people do, people don't. People didn't like when he was under Monk. Mm. There, there was a player in, there was a real player in Ashley Fletcher, who really is. Well, give him a chance. I mean, listen, man, the guy shot for seven goals within the, just within a few weeks. Mm. A son Belongo winds me up because he'll start off the start of the season, firing, 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 die off at Christmas and not come back again. Yeah. And I think in the summer, whoever takes over has got to receive something of the squad because those fans can see which players need to leave. You know what I mean? We can see, you know what I mean? We can see where the improvements need to be. There's going to be a lot of players that do go. Mm. Half your half, probably half the defenders, Randolph. Mikel will be gone. Best is might, might obviously best is obviously on He's goal. on the own, yeah. Yeah. Um, you like to have an ears might go, down in the probably go. Yeah. So you're gonna be left with half a team. And for me, the biggest worry I've got, mate, is the fact that I feel like we're going straight back over to when Borough first came down the first time. And it took us six, seven years to get seven back up again. Years, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think we're looking at that again. Possibly, yeah. aren't we? That, yeah, that, that's I a do. real possibility. I mean, there's a lot of people getting in touch, Leon Putter in. Um Mentioning about it, uh, Tony Pulis, uh, do you think he should stay or go? David Jackson, hi lads, sack Pulis and try Woodgate at the end of the season, nothing to lose. What do you think about that? I'm not for that, I'll be no, totally I, honest. I'm, I'm with you there, I, don't, yeah. I don't see it being any different if Jonathan Woodgate takes over. He's been part of this setup for the last year and a half. I don't see how it'll change anymore. Yeah. And nothing against him. For me, I don't want Jonathan Woodgate to get the job in the summer because I just think. It needs somebody, it needs a total clean sweep of that ch the changing room in terms of the players, the coaching staff. It needs to be totally overhauled. And I don't think bringing somebody in that's been part of the setup for the last year and a half is going to see a total difference. And in terms of the, the last eight games, I just think it'll be the same as when you had Steve Agnew take charge two years yeah. ago yeah. when he replaced Karank. And I, I just don't see that being any way forward or any improvement. That's just my opinion. I totally agree. I totally agree. Get in touch if you disagree. And like I say, I totally it's all agree. about opinions. That's just my personal opinion. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think we'll get the answer. I don't. I know, I know we're skint, as Gibson likes to say, we're skint. But for crying out loud, man! Mm. The guy's got no managerial experience. Do you know what I mean? He's never managed a football club. Yeah, okay, he's been in and around sort of like you know, as a player, he's had a dressing room, was, you know, this, that, and the other. But we need, we need a manager now. For, if it was my choice, honestly, and I was a manager, or so if I say if I was Steve Gibson, for instance. I go straight to Wagner, who used to manage Huddersfield, right, and offer him the job. At the end of the day, he took Huddersfield up on a very, and I mean a very small budget. Mm -hmm. He's got the experience. Next season, whoever is going to take over, you're going to have a very, very small budget once again. Yeah, he's been through the playoff system. He's done it the hard way on penalties. He know, I mean, he literally, he literally, he literally did the hardest way possible. He gets some more out of his squad. I, I'm yeah. a little bit like you. I, I wouldn't go for Wagner. I would go for. Um... Alex Neal would be my choice yeah. at Preston because again he, he's done it on a relatively low budget he's got experience in this league he's got out this league yeah. um, and Smoggy Carlson there he would possibly go for sacking Pulis now because he'd say look at West Brom the sacked mower and they're above us what I would say to that is I think West Brom had really good players yeah. they've got one, one of the best squads I think in the championship this year mm. and for whatever reason they seem to be underachieving they were struggling at home for home form whatever 
But I think they have the players in place there that they really should be doing a lot better. I'm not so sure about our team in terms of... I think the players give plenty in terms of effort, but I think there's just a lack of quality in our squad. 100% there is. 100% there is. And the thing is, is we've got... Thing is, like, we have the talent, but he doesn't use it. Yeah. Like, where about his tavern here? Whenever we need a player to come on, and win it. where was Savannah the Paragon? <laughs> like, <laughs> he came in, never got used. Yeah. Um. You know, there's talent there. I mean, for the Norwich game on Saturday, I, mean, I didn't understand that lineup. He drops Bessage from Bessage for me. I like him. Of course, Wings injured, mm-hmm. but all season long we've seen this guy get dropped. This guy get dropped, and if whoever comes in. I just hope and pray that this guy gets it right. I really do. And I'm not saying that I want to see promotion first season, next season. And listen, it'd be nice to see that in the new manager. I want to see a new manager come in who's got a plan, executes a plan. Steve Gibson, have time, give the new manager time, listen to his objectives. But that's the man that I want to see come out and say something now. Yeah, yeah. Steve Gibson, what is now? A month after the season. I think what's a, a bigger thing as well, mate, is there's just over a week to go before season ticket renewals are yeah. in. And yeah. uh, I dread to think what the season ticket renewals are going to be for next season. The club must be thinking now, we've got to offer something to the fans. We had twenty over 20,000 season ticket holders this season. The way things stand, I mean, I don't know. You, you go to the matches like I do. Yeah. And when you're at games at the moment, I just feel as though there's just an, an all-round atmosphere of flatness at home games. Yeah. Games like Saturday, before the game we were fifth, and even now we're one point off the playoff. You're playing the league leaders and the atmosphere was so flat on Saturday. Yeah. And it's almost as though people are going into the ground half defeated before a game kicks off because they're just thinking, we it's go 1-0 down, yeah. down here, what's going to happen? Are we going to fight back? And you try to be positive as a fan. You go to the games, you don't want to see your team get beat, but at the moment, it's a real battle to go and watch them, isn't it? Oh, it's hard. It, it, mate, it hurts at the minute. It, yeah, it, it, it's, it's it frustrating. Hurts, yeah. It's really frustrating. It's frustrating and it, it just hurts. Yeah. You're coming out when you see your team get beat again and you know as a fan. There's nothing you can do on the pitch wise to change it. Yeah. Apart from sitting in your seat or stand up in your seat and just sing for the lads. But it hurts. It, that's the kind of thing. Like, it really does hurt. Mm. And I don't think we deserve it. I said it all season. We don't deserve this kind of stuff. We don't deserve to be silenced almost. Where about the chairman coming out and telling us for next season, renew your season for this and this and this. This is what I want to do. Don't come out and say you want to smash the league because that never even lived up to the hype that you said it would. But at least come out. And tell us what's going on with Pulis. Is he staying or is he going? Who's taking over? So as fans know. Mm-hmm. Right, so for the new season, I'm going to do my season team because this guy's going to be in charge. And these are the these are the realistic aims and objectives. Yeah. Don't just sit there inside yeah. inside your posh seat and don't say nothing for the fans. We need to hear what's going on. We need to hear something. It, it, something needs to happen, doesn't it? Because like I say at the minute, it's just drifting along aimlessly. The club yeah. just seems like it's drifting down a path where you're just worried about where it's heading. Um, you, Fair point, David Jackson here. He would put Woodgate in charge for the final eight games just to prove he's not up to it and appoint a proper boss in the summer. Um, that's a fair point. I mean, but you never know. It could work out with Jonathan Woodgate for the final eight games. I'm just, I'm not so sure myself. And I just think it just needs an overhaul in that club. And I'm not talking about, we know there's not a lot, of, an awful lot of money there, but I just think it needs a new approach. Um, yeah. Because I just feel as though... Yeah, at the minute, there, it's, not, it's not working out <laughs> at all. Um, Columbo South stand there. Evening, boys. Uh, Gibbo's commitment being questioned more than ever. And I mean, after all he's done for the club and what he continues to do for the club, we don't know the full ins and outs of what's going on behind the scenes. And I think he was interested in Tony P- uh, Pulis's programme notes for the game on Saturday. The vast major- majority of the column was talking about the financial um, situations at various clubs in the championship and talking about why they're overspending and these penalties need to be brought in. And it was more talking about financial constraints. And is that going to be Tony Pulis's legacy when he leaves the club? Is that he got the club on a sound financial footing, but there's not a great deal going on on the if pitch. That's the only... It's just frustrating, isn't it? I understand yeah, we want a club there to support and I get all that. But it seems to have come at the total cost of any sort of product on the pitch. If he's, if he's going to leave that on his head saying, well, you know what it is, I went to Middlesbrough for 18 months. And listen, I got him financially disabled. Yeah. If you're going to leave that sort of achievement on your head, Tony Pulis, and you came here for the wrong thing, we're not saying that we wanted to be promoted. We're not saying that we wanted to be promoted inside the top two. And, but we wanted to see good football. We you want to go up with game and be entertained, don't you? There's yeah. so many fans that I know. and it, 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 It's sad to see that but the fans that you've known that have been there throughout the bad times are now going to not going to go to the stadium no more. 
I seen one of guesty guesty told us on Saturday on the way to the match. I put a fan in us, and I goes to Barnsley, which is Barnsley. Oh god, it's because it's because it's more entertaining, but it's true, it's more yeah, entertaining. Yeah. yeah. It's probably cheaper to get into a, it's probably cheaper to get in. Yeah. And you look at some you know me, you look at the performances of the butter. Yeah. They're not entertaining. You don't get entertainment, you go and watch butter at home. Yeah. It's not entertaining. As you said, the atmosphere is flat. Yeah, purist. I mean, listen, purist. You know, I mean, I've got given you a piece of paper that I actually give to John. <laughs> I got it at home. I should have brought it tonight, mate. <laughs> the piece of paper that he gave to the players, right? I have it at home, and it got chucked behind the goal of the south stand. And uh, yeah, someone yeah, maybe worse, something like that, mate. Someone give it to me, and it had Clayton, uh, Flint, Shot, Ayala, Fry, and it just had numbers. And next to Clayton, it had nothing. But I just thought to myself, is that all you're going to give? It didn't say attack. I was thinking he was going to say score a goal on it. I actually thought Adam Clayton had a decent game on Saturday. I thought he played but... well. Yeah. But yeah. For me, I just look at it and I just think, that, that's the one thing I got to me the most, is that we're playing the league leaders. And the atmosphere was dead. But if you look against the leads that weren't even at the top of the league, mm. if you compare that game to Norwich, yeah. You think the leaders are top of the league we were playing because we were at them, we were on them, yeah. and the atmosphere yeah. was boom. Rob Wheel and Norwich fans got in touch with us. He said, uh, thought you were pretty decent against us in the first half, missing a good finisher by the looks of it. Yeah. Those shots you were picking off were pretty lame, no power and grass cutters. Yeah, I think I would agree with that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And like I say, there's a good one here from uh, Matthew Groves. Great comment here. Hate the criticism Gibson is getting at the moment. I think people forget what he did. He currently is a millionaire working in a billionaire's business. He won't come out and say out because it's fairly obvious to see. And I get that. But I think in any walk of life, you can't rest on your laurels, Matthew. And it's okay. We're always in debt to what Steve Gibson's done in the past, but that's in the past. Where are we going in the future? And I totally get that you're saying he's a millionaire working in a billionaire's business now. That's fine. But can he bring someone on board to work alongside him? if it needs something, because otherwise, are we just signing up and I'll say, right, we're a championship club for forever and a day now. We've got no ambitions to go any further than that. We know our limit. This is what we are. And if you're going to do that, then say that to people mm. instead of then saying, right, I'm not going to tell them where the club's heading, but I want five, six, seven, eight hundred pound of your money yeah. for your season ticket renewal and you don't know where the club's heading. Um, like I say, I've got ungrateful in any sort of uh, shape or form what Steve Gibson done. He has done more for this football club than any one person has uh, in the past. And like I say, he has done amazing things for this town. He's put this town on the map through the football club. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that you're above criticism and that things can't move on or things can't change. Things have to change. And I think things need to change at the football club. And I'm not saying remove Gibson, but I think something needs to be done because at the moment, the club seems to be stagnating. That's it. But everyone just seems lost. Yeah. Everyone just seems lost. Frustrated, angry, and most of all lost because we don't know what's happened. Like you say, there the club's going in direction, and the fans don't know even know where it's going. Yeah. And really, the fans they are the football club, yeah. Oh, yeah, we've oh, gone. Oh, lost some, yeah, yeah where they gone? <laughs> Let's have a look, mate. Where are we? <laughs> I'm there, it's just gone off. Are we down here somewhere, Chrome. No, oh, this one's Safari. Yeah, Being pulled. Not connected to power. No, I was feeling there for days. Is it going? <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, we might still. I oh, know, we're still on. Right. Oh, we're, we're still here, so we can't get your comments. Um, but it is, and I think Borough fans are just fr frustrated at the moment, mate. And yeah. like I say, it's just. It's a worry because at the end of the day, we want the best for the football club, as everybody does. The players do. Tony Pulis will. Nobody's there because yeah. they don't want things to work out. And they don't want the club to succeed. Yeah. Um, and like I say, we all want the best. We love the team to get promoted. But at the moment, it's just like a little bit of a worry about where are things heading. Well, that's it. That's it. And that's it. You know, it's a lot harder now. We don't know where we've gone. But, <laughs> um, no, absolutely correct there. Um, and also, we're going to have to stay on as well because we don't have to end the stream when the stream does end. Right. But away from that, staying professional, <laughs> it's very, very true that all I want to do is I just want to see him come out, mate. Just tell us, someone from the football club, just come out and tell us. Who are you seeing to for this reason? Because fans, I'm seeing all over social media, are saying, I will not renew because he's not told us, what, he's not told us objectives. Mm -hmm. We need to know where it's going. Where is the, what's his plans? Yeah. In the next five years, where does he plan on Borough to be? Does he plan on being 
in the Premier League or is he planning to still staggering along and doing another five-year sort of journey through the championship? Because we need to know. Mm -hmm. And if anything, we deserve to know as fans. We, we, you know what I mean? We deserve to know. Yeah. Where about we're heading, mate? Yeah. I mean, getting back to things on the pitch, um, on Saturday, Villa won, Derby won, yeah. Bristol City, we played tomorrow night, had a fantastic result at Sheffield Unreal. United. So we're down to eighth place now. Um, but a win tomorrow could put us back up to fifth, funnily enough. Um, but in truth, our current form, one point from the last five games, it's just, it's the worst form or run of form we've been on for six years. Four straight defeats, um, In the championship. What yeah. do you put this downturn in form? Why do you think we've hit the brick wall or do you think this is something that's been coming? I think, do you know what? It could be a handful of things. First off, I think when you look at it now and you think four straight defeats, three of them came at home. Ever since that Wigan game, it seems, it seems to have gone downhill. Mm. He had the fans, Pulis. He had the fans. We played Leeds, he had the fans. When we played Blackburn away and we beat one nil. He had the fans there, and fans are starting to get a bit more positive. Starting to start, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Start getting more bums on seats inside the Riverside. We go to Wigan and draw nil nil, and it was toxic again. Well, we went to Wigan that day, still with an outside up of trying to get into the top yeah. two, and now five games later, we're like, it's really made the city change. The playoff places. Well, I think it was Brentford at home when he took off bricks and brought on friend of a lost two one, yeah, yeah, and that's yeah, when everyone yeah. said, "Ah, oh, he's he's a that." And I thought to myself, "Beulah, when you had the fans there, you lost them that because of silly tactics." Yeah. And that's when I think to myself, how badly do you want to take us up, Tony? Yeah. How badly do you want to make us a success? Yeah, yeah. Because I don't know if he does. Yeah, Matthew Groves, I agree. He does need a helping hand. I think this is Steve Gibson at the moment. Yeah. Um, he's currently overpaying for average players. Yeah. We nearly, we really need to get rid of the deadwood on mad wages. And I think, Matthew, that's another side issue. That's a side point that there's people there who are negotiating contracts for these players that really, I know it might be difficult to attract players to Middlesbrough, but we seem to be paying way over the odds yeah. for some of the players we've brought <laughs> in. Not just in terms of the fees, but the wages, and that's yeah. absolutely crippling the club. But someone's got to take control of that and say, hang on a minute, do we really want to pay X, Y and Z for this player when we know if they went to another club in that division, they wouldn't be getting anywhere near that sort of money. And Middlesbrough a bit of a soft touch, do you think, in the transfer absolutely market? Absolutely, and I think Butters... Negotiation is clearly someone in there, whether it be the big man Bowser or whoever he's got next to him, telling him, Look, give him this amount. And listen, when you look at the likes of Rudy Gustav, I'm not trying to single him out. Mm -hmm. but when you go for Rudy Gustav, right, as a player, yeah. and you're going to offer him 48 grand a week, what's he doing now to earn 48 grand? He's not, he's not injured. We know mm. he's not injured. Yeah, yeah. He signed the reserves, but he sat at home on the match there thinking, Man, get 48 grand. Yeah, yeah. What's he doing to deserve them wages? And you look at over, take, over the other players. That aren't playing. If you just have your, I don't think any player right now, butter, is on under ten grand a mm, week. Mm. What are they doing to deserve that money? That's a lot of money. They're well paid, and like I say, I don't think they go out to perform badly. But at the moment, it doesn't seem like we're getting value for money, are we? They're not. They're not. They're not playing for the badge. Yeah. They're not giving it hundred percent. If they were giving it hundred percent, we wouldn't lose games. Yeah. And and if we do lose games, then players drop to their knees every single game. Mm. They're not giving up. I mean, they're not running themselves into the ground. There's very, yeah. very few players. And I'll single out one that does. Johnny Alson. If all the players play like him and give the effort that he gives every match day, mate, we wouldn't be saying, are you now complaining about the club? Yeah. Johnny Alson, for me, he's a fantastic player in the respect of he gives everything, and I mean everything, for the badge week in, week out. If the other players went like he does, and Randolph, Randolph does as well. Yeah, I'll Randolph's the player amount of points he's got this season, him and Housen for me this season, yeah. they're my players of the season. Yeah. They've been absolutely fantastic. Yeah. No, um, Rob Wheeler there, our Norwich yeah. fans, sometimes good to get an outsider's view on things. So we'd love you to kick on and beat United in the playoffs. I don't know whether it means Leeds or Sheffield United. Yeah. Only way to change is get rid of Pulis, get Wagner in, inject some life into Borough with seven games to go. Good luck, lads. A change, a change. Yeah. And do you know what? If we did that, if we brought in Wagner now, he might change things. Mm. I'm not saying that he'd do anything for him, but he might change things. Yeah. He might put a pos positive outlook on it. Yeah. And fans will come back with yeah. someone new. I think it does need something because, I mean, I hope I'm wrong, but I'm getting the sort of feeling that there'll be about 14,000, 15,000 inside that ground yeah. tomorrow night. I know the crowd will be 2021 20, because of season ticket sales, yeah. but I don't think there'll be any more than 14,000, 15,000 in the ground because people are just starting to, and this is awful to say, I think people start to lose interest in the borough. Lose interest. Um, Lose interest and in everything with it. I think everyone's mm. just getting sick of it. But you're seeing people saying, I'm not going to go until he's gone. Yeah. And they're asking to go. 
I seen fans outside the game on Saturday and I couldn't believe it. They were selling the tickets. Really? They should have said to him, does anyone buy a ticket £20? I should have had the ticket office. Yeah. Saying, I sell you my ticket for 20 quid. Do you want it? And people say, no, oh, no, no, I've already got a ticket for this game, like you. But that's how bad it's got. People that are turned to Riverside to flog the tickets so they don't want to go in. Yeah, it's scary. It's scary it is, mate. I mean, for all we're just outside the playoffs, I think it's interesting that following Saturday's game, a number of Borough fans have commented saying, right, that's it, the season's over now. Yeah. Um, yet with one point off sixth place. So do you think it's a fair comment to say the season's over? Or do you think people just feel that way because they can't see things improving? I won't lie when I said I said it this morning when I was at work. I stood around all the lads at work and I said I feel like it's over because I'm right. frustrated, I'm angry. Mm -hmm. I'm That's angry the word, because... Frustrated. Yeah. I'm angry, I'm frustrated, I'm annoyed and I'm upset because I know for a fact this isn't a butter that we, <laughs> that we all know. The butter we're seeing right now, it's not the butter we used to be seeing. Now, when we say the season's over, the season could have been over and Borough still in the playoffs and losing every week. The teams around us weren't overlapping us. Mm. Your season could have been finished then. Your season could have been done four games ago. Yeah. But you look at them four games and you think, you lost it. You lost it at Preston and Brentford. Pulis and, and the Borough, you lost it then. Right. Our heads are gone mm. then. Now, if we manage to go into the playoffs, it is not an achievement unless we win it. Last season when we got in, everyone ran on the pitch and celebrating. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't... It was, Borough didn't do anything then. We didn't, yeah. Borough didn't achieve anything then. No. The achievement comes if you get to the playoffs and you go to Wembley and you win it. Yeah. That's an achievement. Coming second place mm -hmm. to Norwich wasn't an achievement. Yeah. You, you felt more good than what you did anything else. I'll be honest, mate. I mean, I'd like, I want the Borough to go up, don't get me wrong, and I want us to get in the playoffs, but there's a part of me at the moment that thinks, is there really any point getting to the playoffs? Because I just look at the other teams that are going to be in there. And the one thing that they all seem to have that we don't have is goals in the team. And you're yeah. going to have to score goals to get through three playoff games. I mean, last year, we got the two games with Villa didn't score a goal. And if I'm being brutally honest, I think if we make the playoffs again this year, probably the same would happen again, whether we play Leeds yeah. or Sheffield United. We're not going to score a great deal of goals. And I just think all well and good to get to the playoffs. But then, like you say, for it to be successful, you've got to achieve something once you get there. It's yeah. not good, just good enough finishing sixth in the league and then getting beaten the semi final of the playoffs. Went through that last year. There is no achievement there. There is no, there is no, I remember Borough fans around time, there, there is no achievement there. Getting to a playoff and getting knocked out, well, you may as well finish seventh. Yeah. You may as well finish seventh because you didn't achieve nothing. Seventh place didn't yeah. achieve nothing. You're in the same boat as them. You're still in that same league next season. Yeah. And I think we said about frustrating. That's the one word I'd use all the time, frustrating, because I still think that this league this season is not as good as it was last year. Um, and for all, I think our squad's got its limitations. I still think we've underachieved this year. I think we've underperformed still on the pitch. Yeah. And um, that, for me, is not just down to Pulis. I think that's, again, like you said earlier on, that's down to the players as well. I think I don't think there's many in that squad can look themselves in the eye and say, do you know what? I've had a really good season here. I think you could probably count on one hand the number of players that have had a good season in the Borough shirt this year. Yeah, Randolph, Housen, um, Wing, Savile at times, maybe, at a push. Um, Dale, Dale Fry. Fry, yeah, yeah. Fry, um, and possibly George. And that's only five there. Yeah. And that's what you look at and you think, it's really bad. Yeah. How big is the squad? And you're picking five or six, five or six names out. Yeah. And saying they've had a good season. Yeah. And realistically, it should be your whole team. Should be the whole eleven. Yeah. But you can't pick them out. And people are going to say, "Oh well, what about Brit? Brit on Bolonga scored twelve goals. He's a fifteen million pound striker. Yeah, yeah. Pookie costs less than a million for Norwich. He's got twenty five goals yeah. and about eleven assists as well. And there's a difference. Who wants it more? Which player really wants to give it all? Yeah. And really wants to try and make a statement in that yeah. football club? Sorry, so, uh, yeah. Uh, I think that's our old mate CB game in there. What would it be like if we went up? We would go straight back down no matter what. I get that, but I think from a financial point of view, it would be great for the club to go up. I totally agree. I think if we went up, one, you'd have Tony Pulis in charge again next season and it wouldn't be great to watch, but he, he, he'd probably keep you up with the, yeah. his experience in the Premier League. But I think from a financial point of view, it would be great for the club to go up. If I'm honest, mate, I think the three teams that go up out of the Championship next year will probably come down. Because what I yeah. saw in Norwich on Saturday, and it's no offence, they're half decent in the Championship, but I think they'll struggle massively yeah. in the champ uh, in the Premier League next season. Same goes for Leeds, Sheffield United, West Brom. All of them, they'll all struggle next season yeah. in the in the Premier League massively. And I'd, I'd be amazed if one of them stayed up out the three. So, um, like I say, 
if we were to go up, it'd be exactly the same rules. I think we would probably more than likely come yeah, back down. It was just town vlogger there, Alex Griffin, good friend of mine. Yeah. What are your thoughts on the atmosphere, like the, the Riverside Stadium? Well, it's not great at the minute, but I think it goes hand in hand with performances and results. If you're winning week in and week out, yeah. you'll have a good atmosphere. I'd uh, say Alex will know what it's like at Portman Road at the minute. I mean, they've had a disastrous season. Yeah. Um, and Pennington's out now, I think, as well. They're yeah. Centre back. Yeah. I mean, they lost at home to Hull, didn't it, the weekend? And it, God, it must be hard times for them at the minute with them heading towards League One and Norwich on the way up to the Premier League. But things can soon turn around in football. Yeah. I mean, look at our neighbours up the road, Sunderland. They're having a great time of things in League One at the minute. They're in a playoff <laughs> place and the Czech Trade Trophy, one of the biggest tournaments you can win in world football. Well, yeah. they've got the final of it, but couldn't quite see you through. They're going to be on for the tea. No, I'll be on for breakfast, mate. That's it. That's about it. <laughs> really? Well, yeah. well, well in Portsmouth yesterday. You know what I mean? Just going away from the butter. Portsmouth. <laughs> Honest, lads. I thank you, lads, so much. You have to have something to laugh about and smile. That made me smile yesterday. Portsmouth. Like, I'm going to buy one of your shirts and get thank you on the back of it and post it <laughs> on my social media. I don't think I've ever celebrated so hard for a team that isn't the butter. Yesterday, I jumped up with you, lads. Don't you worry about that. Uh, Key and Finn there was just... Uh... Thanks for watching the show as always, Keen. A uh, question when we said uh, maybe George Friends had a good Yeah, I don't season. know why I said George Friends. <laughs> I don't know why I said him. I think George I'm, I'm, himself will acknowledge he's had a bit yeah. of a difficult season, hasn't he? I just know there's a lot of George Friend fans out there, but I don't know why I said George He's Friend. 100% a George, give him that without yeah. a doubt. Yeah. Um, Alex Griffin, Lambert could be going as well. Are you boys Pulis in or out, or do you think Ipswich, and do you think Ipswich will bounce back up? Tony Pulis, I think, will be here at the end of the season. Yeah. I'm pretty sure of that. Um, but then for me, I think if we don't go up, I think it's maybe time for, for Tony to move yeah. on. But my personal opinion is I would like to see somebody from outside the club, not 100%. somebody that's already involved. Agreed. I would like to see someone from outside come in um, and take the reins in the summer and just maybe steer the club in a different direction. Because I think at the moment, um, it's just a bit concerned about where we're heading. Yeah, That's I just agree. my opinion. I yeah. agree. And also for um, Ipswich to come back up, I think, I think they will. Uh, we're within the borough again. I think Ipswich probably will come back up. Do you know what? There's some good teams in that league one, though. There if you is. look at some there decent is. teams, I mean, Luton, who would have predicted that they've gone Portsmouth. absolute Portsmouth, yeah, Barnsley. Some Barnsley. Decent sized clubs. Shrewsbury, though, they're a weird thing because last season they were flying. This season yeah. they're a bit. Struggle. Coventry are just outside. Charlton the club. Are doing this is well. Charlton are in there. So it's not an easy league. So I think Ipswich, a lot of teams will see you as a big target next year if you're in League One. So yeah, it's tough. Lee Bailey, oh, he's, Mac and Rob is, uh, is it, he's a he's a plastic Borough fan, but he pretends he's a Sunderland fan as well. But he was crying into his cheesy chips yesterday on Wembley Way. Yeah, poor Rob. Yeah, never mind. Um, but yeah, I mean, getting back to things on the Borough, mate. Yeah, uh, it's been a desperate few weeks for us. We're having a laugh at Sunderland's expense, which has been desperate for us. But all's not lost. Two massive games this week. Uh, Bristol City tomorrow is a huge one. Yeah, they're coming off the back of an amazing three-two win at Sheffield United at the weekend. So, oh, can we yeah. stop the rock tomorrow night against Bristol City? Um. <laughs> <laughs> that says a lot. That mate, the amount of time it's taking yeah. to think about. I'll this. be honest with you. I'll be really honest with you. I'm dreading tomorrow. I'm dreading Saturday. I'm probably yeah. going to dread the rest of the season. And it hurts to say it because you know, I love this football club. You know, everyone else does, yeah. and I want to see the best. But I keep saying, I said, it, I said, it, I said it, at Villa, I said it, wherever. I said form's got to change, mate. And if we're serious about going up now, and it, it, honestly, if the players are serious and the club are serious about wanting to push for promotion, then tomorrow night, no doubt about it, we'll win. If we're serious, if nothing's changed in the dressing room. And the players went in there after the game on Saturday. And sat there. I was just saying, sorry, on obviously, yeah, yeah, it was Saturday. Saturday yeah, yeah. On Saturday. If they've gone back in there and thought, ah, oh, well, they got me waging go warm, nothing changes. I want to see a Borough win. If Borough win, it's 1 0. If we're to lose, we'll lose 2 1. Yeah, we'll do the predictions in a minute. Okay, so we've got a little set of prediction games to look at. We do. And I don't know if I won the week before. Oh, you might have done. I don't know. I don't want to talk about it anyway. Um, <laughs> following up from Bristol City, it's a long journey at the weekend to South Wales. Uh, yeah. Swansea, uh, one of only three teams that are worse than the Borough at the moment in the last six games in the form oh, wow. table. They're it's also game. Yeah, they're also club that's in a lot of financial difficulties. Um, so that's an opportunity to get some points on the board on Saturday, isn't it? The X ones. Oh, it is it absolutely is. But again, I don't think we'll win. But um, <laughs> <laughs> I'll be, I have to be honest. A Swansea away. How often do we go there and get anything? I remember one year we went there and scored an own goal. 
and that was um, Nicky was Bailey. Cup? All right. And they said Lee Bailey and Nicky Bailey. <laughs> yeah, he was in the cup game. We we hammered him that game. Was it? Was it? What was it? Seb Hines that scored the old. No, goal? no, it was Nicky Bailey. Nicky Bailey came in from this side. and He went straight yeah. in the back then. I was in Dormanstown at the time. I was watching it in the club, and uh, I remember being sat there by myself. There's hardly right. any Butter fans there, but Swansea away. Again, Ollie McBurney, he's a real threat for them as a striker. He's, he's he, been injured recently, but he should be back for that game. Uh, really is. Oh, like I said, I thought he would be back for that yeah, one. Yeah. I thought he would be back for that one. But, yeah. you know, Swansea, mate, it's a real tough place to go. And if I'm honest with you, I don't I don't know when I would... I even fear Bolton because they're fighting for their lives. Because they're fighting for their lives. Yeah. I don't know when our next win's going to come along. Right. And well, it, it pains me to say it. Right then, predictions. Head on the chopping block, mate. Tomorrow night, Bristol City. I feel so bad saying it, but I can see us getting beat 2 1. I can see it. I don't want to say it because yeah. everyone knows how much I love the club, but you have to be honest, you have to be real. Yeah, and that's what you're saying at the minute, isn't I it? I can't wear my rose tinted glasses. They came off in bloody December. Them Santa Claus <laughs> came to my house. I said, Here, take them with you. Give them to Mrs. Claus. She might fancy you a little bit more. Um, no, honestly, I can see us getting beat 2 1 tomorrow. No. no. How about you? 1-1 one, one tomorrow night. Yeah? Yeah, I think it'll be a draw tomorrow night. I think we will stop the draw. I think we might take the lead, but then be pegged back for a 1-1. One, one. Uh, CB game in there. 2-0 uh, to them. 2-0 to Bristol City. Dean Chetwood, like you. Like you, Dean. Like you, Dean. 2-0 to the Borough. Good lad, Dean. We could Good win lad. tomorrow. We could win tomorrow. That's what I'm saying to you there. Yeah. It could be a 1-0 Borough and I take a 1-0. Mm. But if I'm looking at it realistically, they're they they're going to be absolutely bouncing all oh, over. Oh yeah, they, they've, they've, got be, they've got to be high on confidence after getting that win at uh, Sheffield United. I know we've lost four in a row. Yeah. They're going to know that it's here for the taking. It's like it's safe Borough going away now. Yeah, to somewhere like Swansea. Yeah. Like, well, these lads You'd expect us to pack row. it up in a home yeah. game. Yeah, no, that's a fair point. Talking to Swansea, what's your prediction for there on Saturday? Swansea away. I'm not going to say what I said earlier on, and I said them. Um, to them 3-0 to Swansea oh, oh, I never said that 3-0 I saw that 3-0 I think I'm going 1-0 Borough Saturday I think we'll draw tomorrow and we'll win 1-0 at Swansea it'll be ugly it'll be awful it'll be yeah. total Tony Pulis written all over it but I think we'll get a 1-0 at Swansea do you know what I take I take a 1-0 at Swansea I'd love it I'm with you there I take a 1-0 because the fact of the matter is it's a hell of a drive down there, yeah. brother. And if we go there, you disappoint me. And you think I'm angry now? Wait till I'm going to go. And if it rains and I get soaked, wait, is it, wait and see how angry I am then if I come at the Liberty Stadium we've been beat. Because the fact of the matter is, if I go out and the price, the price of a pint down there more than three quid, we're going to be fuming. So I won't mind paying if we win. Yeah. If we lose, brother, you've ruined, my, you've, just ruined, you've ruined your life. So don't lose, please. <laughs> But I'll go with you. I'll go 1 0. 1 0, Borough. Right, okay. Uh, 3 1 at Swansea, we've got there. Dean Chetwood's got 1 1 there. So Dean's got us getting four points on the next two. I'd settle for four points from yeah. our next two games. Yeah. I'd take that right now. Other games we're looking at at the weekend Chef Wed Villa. That's a monster game. That's Steve Bruce Derby. Where's that one at? That's at Hillsborough. <laughs> Steve Bruce yeah, Derby. Yeah, the old Doubtfire Derby. Chef Wed Villa. Yeah. Chef Wed Villa. Villa win it. Villa to win. I said Villa will beat Forest the other week as well. Sheffield haven't no, lost but... under Steve Bruce yet, you know. Ten games undefeated. Are they? Yeah. Drawn a lot, but they're undefeated. They're only three points behind us now. You look at Villa though, mate. They are. They look a different team at the minute. They really do look a different team, Villa. And when they, when they played us, and I thought, we can't get close to these, like, and these are going to be inside the, the playoffs. Soul styling has gone Villa win. So you're going Villa win, are you? I'm going to go for a Villa. And I'm going to go for a Villa... 3-1. 3-1. 1-1 draw, I've gone. Have you? Yeah. Brentford Derby. A Derby? Not Brentford. Um, I'll go another 6-1. One, one. I'm going to go for a 2-1 Brentford. I've gone 2-1 Brentford. Yeah, 2-1 yeah, Brentford. It's yeah. just a good footballing team. Yeah, and I think they Brentford. might uh, turn down. It's difficult to beat at home. Yeah, fingers crossed. Bristol City Wigan. Yeah, let's see. It should be a Bristol City win. Yeah. I'll go for a 2-0 Bristol City. 3-1 Bristol City, I've gone, mate. And last one, Rotherham Forest. Sorry, Rotherham fans. I can see you getting trounced. 3-0 to Forest. Ooh, I think it'll be close. It'll be a tough game because Rotherham desperately need the points, but I think Forest might edge it 2-1. Aye. Right, so we've got quite a few similar ones. I've watched so the Borough ones. now. Write down all my yeah, predictions. Write them all down. Seeing if I win. Next week. It's the Borough ones I think we've uh, disagreed on a fair bit. Whoever yeah. loses, the jumpers had the... No, no. You love jumping inside that giver, you man. You're never <laughs> out of it. Anyway, on a lighter note, yes. I know it's been a bit doom and gloom tonight, and we've been having a go about one or two things to do with the borough. 
the big charity match which we talked about last yeah. week against yeah. uh, Newcastle fans uh, TV Newcastle fans TV the charity game uh, both the Bobby Robson Foundation and the Gary Parkinson Trust how are things going with the preparations good. mate yeah good I say you know the team's coming together well um, made up about a 16 man squad plus others um, but like I say you know it's going to be a lot of competition for places good we we'll have to whittle down some numbers. Um, and overall, we're looking forward to it. Do you know what I mean? There's a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of positive vibes going into it. You know, I spoke to all the lads. Everyone's out doing their own fitness, including myself. I've been running now for about six days straight. And not not much, because obviously I'm a big lad and it takes a while to get Fair into. Fair point, yeah. But I came before I came here and my right leg's completely dead. I'm not joking. <laughs> <laughs> I can't feel my right leg. I've been sat here now trying to do trying to twitch it. It's not moving. Um, but listen, it's hard work and determination, but... You know, if you check out the Butterfan TV, um, I don't know, actually got one of the shirts that will be worn on the actual day of the game. Oh, is this one of the this ma- is, this match is, worn shirts? This is, oh, trust me, AJT, my signing. Yeah. Um, look at that. But look at this, ladies and gents. Um, look at this. Oh, hold that up. They there you me. go, very smart. Look at Butter. It's even got on the back there, yeah, Butterfan the, TV. The, it went off. Fantastic. So, yeah, that's going to be uh, worn yeah. with pride. Pro star. On we June the 2nd. You know, for me to fit in that one, I have to get a little bit more weight than what I have now. Yeah, you better get running, mate. Yeah, but just yeah. you know, I had a palms on in the last couple of weeks. Sidestep that noodle bar over the road <laughs> after the match, <laughs> mate. Yeah. Honestly, though, like I say, man, like, personally, to get, prepared, to, get, to get prepared for it, I've been on my chicken and rice diet, mate. I've been eating, I've been drinking the water. I'm serious, you know what I mean? Stuff of champions, that, mate. I just want to. I just want to be able to sit there or stand there and be able to play for it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Be able to be, able to yeah, be involved. Just enjoy it. At the end of the day, it's all a bit of fun, isn't it? And we're doing stuff yeah. for a good cause as well. But we, it's all about a bit of fun. There's loads of footage going out as well. You want to beat them and all, don't you? Oh, listen, we can't lose. Like you say, man, pro, pro, we've got a new video coming. Uh, potentially, uh, player profiles. Try and get every single player onto a camera. And, you know, yeah, just, just a little bit of chat. Yeah. yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. Well, as always, thanks uh, fans for watching, Borough fans, Norwich fans, fans of all the clubs that are watching. Really appreciate all your contributions and watching us as you always do. Um, sorry, there's been one or two technical issues again this week. Uh, we can't actually end the stream, can we? No, <laughs> no we, we can't, can't end the stream. It's just going to go on and on, I think. Um, so, like I say, thanks for putting up with us again, as you always do every week, guys. Um, there's going to be stuff going out during the week, you right there, James. Yeah. About the grudge match we need. Oh, that's oh, oh it's go. back on. Oh, that was easy, mate. Yeah, he's got half a brain. We haven't oh, got one between dear, us, that, that was way. easy. Um, there'll be previews going out for the games during the week against Bristol City and Swansea. Uh, there'll be all the stuff to build up for the charity matches. I'm going to be talking about that. As we all know, Borough fans, it's never easy being a Borough fan. <laughs> Um, so that's part of the deal when you support our club it's not for an easy ride off of the glory so enjoy the ride if you can until next week from me and AJ all the best and up the borough up the borough there you go